ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರಂ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಾರಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಣಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಾರಂಭಾ ನಾಥಯಾ ಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಕ್ಮರುಕ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತರಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮುಕ್ಷು ಪಡಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ commentary on the three principal mantras that a shri vaishnava is supposed to get initiated into and also chant incessantly among them the first mantra is known as tiru mantra and the exposition of the tiru mantra or the meanings of the tiru mantra of the ashtakshara maha mantra will start from this sutra so before going to the next sutra we have to cover a few aspects that were remaining to be understood as far as the 27th sutra is concerned that is phala mirikum padi prameya shekharitinam archiradigatinam shanno so presently what we are discussing is that what is the nature of the fruits or results a person attains once the ashtakshara maha mantra has become consummated to him earlier we also discussed about the artha panchaka or the five fold principle which is prapyasya brahmano roopam that is the nature of the supreme lord who is to be attained by us praptuscha pratyagatmanah the nature of the individual soul that is we are sense praptyupayam the nature of the means of the individual soul attaining the supreme soul that is lord narayana and phalam prapte what is the result of the individual soul attaining the supreme lord and also prapti virodhi the impediments that prevent a jivatma from <coughs> proceeding in the spiritual path and attaining the supreme lord so these are the five fold principle which has which are known as artha panchaka and it is it was mentioned earlier that the ashtakshara maha mantra deals with these five fold principles in a very detailed and extensive manner and the nature of all these five have, have been explained by pindadokacharya also and commented upon by the great manavala mamuni who succeeded pindadokacharya probably he um, appeared in this world about 80 to 100 years after pillagokacharya here in the 27th sutra swami pillagokacharya mentions that 
we have mentioned about the nature of the results of the individual soul attaining the supreme soul in a work called Pramaya Shekhara. As we all know, Pilladoka Acharya authored Ashtadasha Rahasyas or 18 different treatises on the which are known as the Rahasya Granthas. The word Rahasya refers to a secret. So these were actually secretly given from the Acharya or the preceptor to the disciple or Shishya regularly. And as said, these were not committed to writing. That is why these are known as the Rahasya Granthas. But over a period of time, due to the deterioration in the mentality of people, the human beings, these, there was no other way other than committing these very secretive teachings to writing and make it into the form of a formal treatise because people started to lose faith gradually due to so many factors like the advancing of the Kali Yuga wherein people are, most of the people are interested only in material pursuits and not in spiritual pursuits. Therefore, these had to be committed to writing and start, this tradition started nearly 700 years ago. Today, it has deeply deteriorated, but only because it was committed to writing by the great Acharyas like Kuladok Acharya and Manavana Mamli, we are still able to know the concepts that form the bedrock of Sri Vaishnava philosophy. So here, Pilladok Acharya says, the nature of the results of the individual soul attaining the Supreme Soul have been explained in detail in Pramaya Shekhara, never called Pramaya Shekhara. And also Archiradi Gati. These are two works which are very important as far as these issues are concerned. But we, though the work Pidla Pramaya Shekhara is available to us in print format and though the work Archiradi Gati is available to us in print format, probably people like us, we will not be very eager to go to the work and see what has been mentioned there. Oh, yes, fine. If it is mentioned in Pramaya Shekhara, fine, we are very happy. We will feel like that because we are not so inquisitive to know what has been mentioned in, the, in that work. But the commentator Swami Manavala Mamani, he takes great, great pains and he summarizes what has been mentioned in the Pramaya Shekhara and Arthiradi Gati that is relevant to the current context. Because many a times what happens, people will not be very much, even for example, a person like me who is supposed to have studied all these things in a formal and uh, in the Gurukula system of education. So it has been mentioned in Pramaya Shekharam, fine. Yeah, yeah, I understand. We say I understand or I appreciate it and leave it at that. Will I immediately read that work and refer to the place where it has been, been mentioned and will I read it? Generally, people will not do that. As, therefore, Swami Manavala Mamani has actually summarized what has been mentioned there. Paraveshanta dirikkumpadi engane enna rulichai hirar paramirikkumpadi enne todangi adavade immatpi vatma vikka prapyamana parantan archirari margattale paramapadattile poi paripurna bhagavad anubhavat paipanni avvanubhava janita preeti preritanai kundu pannam ashesha shesha shesha vrittya heyade so this aspect has also been mentioned in detail in the Sri Bhasha of Acharya Ramanuja. How the Jivatma, who has had the 
experience of the Paramatma, of the Supreme Soul, travels to the supreme abode of Lord Narayana, that is known as Vaikuntha. So actually, the Upanishads also mention about this in great detail. And it is to be noted that, one very important point is to be noted that, though we all tell that all Sri Vaishnavas definitely they go to Paramapada only, it has been very specifically mentioned that a Sri Vaishnava means one who has had the vision of the Supreme Lord in this body only. While he is, while the individual soul is residing in this body. Only for them it applies. That has been very clearly delineated in the Sri But we believe that since a person, when a person actually acquires the Panchasamskara, the Samashen from his Acharya, he definitely attains moksha in this manner only. But that is only the beginning of the beginning because there is a huge path that has to be followed if this has to really happen. But generally, many a times what happens while giving discourses, scholars do not mention about that aspect because it is very complicated one. And second thing, they want people to get some faith in this. So sometimes little exaggeratedly also they will tell this. So it was a very beautiful example is given in this regard. So suppose a person wants to acquire a PhD degree. He approaches a professor and the professor advises him, you get you first you have to enroll yourself in a university. And <clears throat> then you have to go through the registration process, etc., by which you will acquire a PhD degree. Is this statement correct or wrong? Definitely it is correct. Because if you have to actually get a degree that is recognized by people all over the world, by the other universities or by, by the companies that hire or things like that, the university has to be a reputed university. It should be properly constituted as per law. It should be eligible to grant degrees. And then there one has to enroll because without enrollment, without any registration, a PhD degree cannot be granted. So it is like saying if you get registration, you will attain acquire the degree. This statement is totally correct. But mere registration does not guarantee your degree. Because then you have to do research work. Then you have to actually submit the thesis, you have to prepare a thesis or whatever a dissertation or whatever it is called. Then it has to go, to go to the examiners. The examiners have to actually approve it, saying that it is fit for award of a research degree. Then you have a viva OCR where the oral examination is conducted. And then actually a notification is issued by the university stating that this thesis has been accepted for the award of the degree of PhD to the candidate whoever has done the research work. So those who are familiar with academics anywhere in the world, they are familiar with this process. But we actually first state, if you have to get a degree, you have to actually enroll and register yourself as a research scholar or a research candidate or whatever it is. But afterwards also so much of process, so many processes are there which have to be taken care of. If even one process or one formality is not complete, you will not get the degree. Similarly, here also after getting Samashrayana from the Acharya, after duly doing Sharanagati, in whatever manner, then you have to follow certain principles in life and also engage in certain practices. So many a time Sri Vaishnava Acharya say that you should not do anything as a sadhana or as a means. 
we should not engage in any practice which actually has to be understood in the proper spirit it means that you should not do anything with the mindset that you are achieving something or you are doing something that will be come from for which you will get a commensurate uh, result because the sadhanas are the means that we employ or we follow are actually nothing created nothing compared to the result of moksha that we get that has to be explained in great detail i am not going to that point so having done that so whether it is bhakti yoga gnana yoga bhakti yoga or whatever it is or prapatti yoga as shri vishnu has called it in this context after following the path of prapatti because even prapatti has its own uh, stages it says anukulyasya sankalpah pratikulyasya varjanam rakshishyati iti vishwasah goptritva varanam tatha atmanikshepa karpanye shadvidha sharanagati shadvidha means not six types six stages of sharanagati or prapatti or surrender exist and the shri vishnu who has surrendered he has to go through all these steps unless these steps are going gone through the sharanagati or prapatti will not be complete that i will explain later because that will come in the course of the text only but this is very important so when some acharyas or scholars shri vishnu has called say you should not do anything you have to add a clause to it stating that you should not do anything which you think will be a means to attain moksha so it is mentioned as sadhanatva buddhiyave you should not think that you are engaging in some means that will get you the results so without thinking that you are engaging in some means you have to do it without any particular aim or objective in mind because you have to do it kevala as bhagavat kai kariya or as bhagavat pritya there is minor difference among the two sampradayas of shiva ishtamism that doesn't um, it is not totally against each other or different from each other because unless a person has love or bhagavat pritya he cannot engage in kai kariya unless a person has the service priti will not come or love or affection will not come so that is why it is mentioned as na akinchit kurvataha shesham suppose a person says i am your servant and he does not do anything that the master likes can he be called as a servant so he becomes he can be called as a servant or he can be treated as a servant or the master may shower his love and affection on his servant only when the servant acts as the as a real servant does that means he should do everything that the master asks him to do otherwise he will not be called as a servant many a times what happens in shri vishnu parlance they will say adiyen adiyen means i am your servant and dasa also we have as shri vishnu has all of us have, have rama and dasa or madhurakavi rama and dasa etc etc et so adn is the tamil version of the form or the word dasa which both are equal dasa is the sanskrit word and adn is the english uh, tamil word so <laughs> very beautifully a great scholar used to uh, give an example so since uh, keshav das ji has stayed in shirangam he will be able to enjoy this so many a times on certain occasions lord ranganatha will actually uh, come to the banks of kaveri that is the processional deity who is known as namberuma he will come to a place called amma mandapam which is on the banks of the kaveri in shirangam 
and uh, the Abhishekam or Uchel bath of the Lord DT, presiding DT, that is number mark, will take place there. So, when after the main Abhishekam is over, the internal Abhisheka, that is, it is not done in front of everybody, the uh, screen will be actually uh, closed and inside the what we call as the Antaranga Abhisheka will take place. So at that time, some more that holy water will be required to be brought from Kaveri. So outside, so many Shri Vaishnavas will be staying there. So one of the Archakas or the Pujaris will come outside and say, Sir, can you kindly bring one part of water from the Kaveri? Then certain people will not like this because they have their own sense of ego. They are not mentioning about any particular individual. But it is natural for people to have their egos. So he says, Oi, dear to Nedapanindwara, kindly bring, sir, kindly bring, help me by bringing a pot of water from the river. It's about 20, 25 steps downwards. Then the person will say, Adakadi and Dakarchena. Did you get this, this servant only for offering the service? Why don't you ask somebody else? So, in this context, using the word Adi and your servant is totally incorrect. Because will a servant say, Why are you asking me to do it? Why don't you ask another servant? Then, if he says so, then he cannot be qualified to be called as a servant. So it is very important that we inculcate that sense of servitude to the Supreme Lord. This is very, very, very important. And perform all the rituals, all the prescribed aspects with love and affection to the Supreme Lord. And then so many processes have to happen by which one attains the <coughs> grace of the Lord and also he will attain the vision or darshana or sakshatkara of the Supreme Lord, then he actually becomes a real Shri Vaishnava. From then only the process of bhakti really starts. So that's, that is why Yamanacharya says in his Gita Artha Sangraha that Swadharma Jnana Vairagya Sadhya Bhakti Eka So bhakti or Devotion unto the Lord does, is of two types. The bhakti that devotion we do as of now, before we have the vision of the Supreme Lord, is of a very inferior quality. But definitely it is required. Why? Why is it required? It is required because we have to attain the vision of the real knowledge about the nature of the Supreme Lord. That is why it is Prapyasya Brahmano Rupam. The real nature of the Supreme Lord is what we have to know. The bhakti or devotion we are supposed to have towards the Supreme Lord now is known as Sadhana Bhakti. The bhakti that is the means to knowledge of the nature of the Supreme Lord. And once you have the knowledge, once you acquire that knowledge, then you start loving him, then you have more devotion towards him. That is known as Sadhya Bhakti. That is the result of the Sadhana Bhakti. These are all very, very subtle nuances. Nuance itself is subtle. I am mentioning subtle nuances of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya because these type of subtle nuances do not exist in other Sampradaya as far as I know. So, <clears throat> when this happens, when he acquires the knowledge of the Supreme Lord, when he acquires the knowledge of the na true nature of the Supreme Lord, he becomes qualified to attain moksha. Then what happens? He travels through the Sushumna Nadi. There are, that is a huge uh, topic in Yoga, Sutra, Yoga Shastra, which we accept because it has been mentioned in the Brahma Sutras, it has been mentioned in the Upanishads, and it has been commented upon in the same manner by Bhagavad Ramanda Acharya also in the Shibhash. So the Sushumna Nadi is said to be in this, located at the end of the Sushumna Nadi. 
is for a specific yogic path, I would like to put it like that, exists in this, in what is known as the Brahmarandra, or the topmost portion of the head. And the Jivatma or the individual soul has to leave the body through the Sushumbhanadi. Then only he becomes eligible to attain moksha. Until then, if the individual soul does not leave or does not pass through the Sushumbhanadi out of this body, he will not be able to attain moksha. That has been very, very, very clearly mentioned in Sri and one who does so, he will travel through the Archiradi Marga. So in the Brahma Sutras, it says Archiradinata Prathitehi. And Pridhadokacharya has given that same name to the work itself, which is called Archiradi Gati. That is how the Jivatma or the individual soul travels from the body. A Jivatma who is qualified to attain moksha, that has to be underlined because it is not underlined generally. People, the Sri Vaishnava scholars, they actually generalize this to a great extent for reasons which I have explained earlier. Only such a person who proceeds from this body through the Sushumnanadi, he travels through the Archiradi Marga. That has been beautifully explained in the were called Archiradi Kati. It has been explained in the Upanishads. It has been experienced by Namalva. That is the greatest uniqueness of Namalva, who was the premier boss Arvar, because no person who has left this body will come back to say what happens or what happened. What happens after a Jivatma or individual soul leaves the body? Nobody knows. <laughs> we have different accounts in the Bhagavad Gita. It says, Jatasya Dhruva Mrityu Dhruvam Janma Mrityu. He dies once again, he is born as another person or another animal or whatever it is. But he attains another birth. And once again, he dies, once again, he is born. This is what Bhagavad Gita says with regard to ordinary people. For people who have had the by performance of Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, etc., those who have had the vision of the Supreme Lord, they become Amrita. They transcend the cycle of births and deaths. How that happens? That is also mentioned. Tatra Prayata Agachanti Brahma Brahma Vidojana. Tatra Prayataha Brahma Gachanti. So those people attain the Supreme Lord Himself. Who? Brahma Vidaha Janaha. Those who have attained the knowledge of the Supreme Brahman will actually travel through that path and attain moksha or salvation. So that is known as Archiradi Marga. That is explained in detail in the Upanishads by the sages and almost similarly because minor differences are there between what has been mentioned in the um, by the Marvar and also by what has been mentioned in the Upanishads because each person's experience varies from the other. No two persons can ever have the same experience at any time. So each person's experience is totally, totally, totally unique. And even if the same person has two experiences, even they are totally unique, it is not the same in all respects. Because the time is different, the place is different, etc. Et so, the greatest greatness of the murder, if I may put it so, is that it is a great surprise how he could actually, while having, while possessing the body, while residing in a human body, how he could have the darshan or the vision of the Archiradi Lord, which is given in the decade called Shul Vishamani Mohi, Tori Yamodakina, etc., which is the penultimate 10 stanzas before he actually attains moksha. So it is probably for the benefit of ordinary people like us that the Lord 
gave that knowledge of the Archiradi Marka so that he could actually sing it in the form of stanzas for the knowledge of people like us who otherwise would not have known what it is. So, Abhavade Archiradi Margattare Paramapadattire Poi Paripurna Bhagavadana Bhavattai Panni So, he has to proceed through the Archiradi Marka or the path known as Archiradi which is once again explained in detail, but probably not, it is beyond our comprehension as of now, because we can understand only it based on some analogies, etc. Archira dimar gattile paramapadattile poi paripurna bhagavadanu bhavattai panni And then it is all mentioned how he actually takes bath in a divine river called Viraja where he actually loses all his material identities and he attains a divine body. He actually even gives up his Sukshma Sharira, which is all explained in great detail in the Vedanta Shastra. I will not go into it now. And then he attains a divine body, which is not like this body, which is Panchabhotika made up of the five elements and which has several types of fallacies and also unclean matter, etc. That body is divine and it is imperishable. This body is momentary, it is perishable and it is totally worldly. It has got nothing to do with divinity. Of course, it is very important. This body is required for a person to have the vision of the Supreme Lord within this body only. But when compared to that body, which a person attains, after taking bath in the Viraja Nadi or the, the river Viraja, this body is actually very inferior. So he attains the portals of Vaikuntha and Paripur Nabhagavadanu Bhavattai Panni. He has the complete experience of the Supreme Lord. And due to that, what happens? So the bliss that he attains when he experiences the Supreme Lord is unsurpassed. That has been explained as Brahmananda, which I have explained earlier also. And there may be another opportunity to do so, as explained in the Upanishads. And due to that experience, he attains great devotion towards the Lord. Preeti preeri avvanubhava janita preeti preeri tanai kundu pannum ashesha pravrittya hayare. So, all these he engages in the service of the Lord. So, this also I have explained earlier how serving the Lord is not a, an issue that is that begets misery like serving ordinary people, it begets great, great, great bliss. So, preeti prayer itanai kundu, it is voluntarily done and involuntarily done also in a, in a way. Both voluntary and involuntary. Voluntary in the sense nobody is actually forcing him to do it. He, do, he does it on his own account. And I mention involuntarily in the sense he cannot control himself from engaging in the servitude of the Lord. So, it is both voluntary and involuntary from the respective points of view. Preeti preeri tanai kundu pannum ashesha shesha vrittya hayare. So he engages in continuous, continuous, continuous servitude of the Lord, which grants him eternal bliss. Adirukkum padiyai sangrahena kameya shekhanam ahira prabandhattinum. How that bliss is? Actually, it cannot be explained in words, but for us to get a glimpse of what it is. It has been explained in a very beautiful manner in Pilaloka Acharyas. Prameya Shekhara in a concise manner. Prameya Shekhara Mahira Prabandhattilum Vistarena Archiradigatiya Hira Prabandhattilum And it has been explained in great detail in the work called, in the treatise called Archiradimal, Archiradigati. 
விஷரமாக சொன்னோம் அவத்திரே கண்டு கொள்வது எங்கை சோ ஹி சேஸ் டு பிளீஸ் ரெஃபர் டு தோஸ் ஒர்க்ஸ் பட் இட் ஹாஸ் பீன் எக்ஸ்பிளைன்ட் இன் சஃபிஷியன்ட் for us to get a sufficient glimpse to this here by swami madavana mahi so then we go to the 28th sutra so that is first introduced in this manner ini mantra trike pratiparam artha marudichai vadah tirulnam patti prathamam idanudi akshara sankhyam pada sankhyam marudichai hirat so now he comes until now He has given a wonderful, wonderful introduction to the Ashtakshara Mahanandi. What is the background? How did it come to us? What, what all does it say? What all does it include? What is its uniqueness, etc. Having done all these things, now he actually mentions about the individual components of the Ashtakshara Mahanandi. I think that is the right word to mention it because how many alphabets or syllables are there in the mantra how many words are there and why they are significant what do they mean so now he actually comes to explain the mantra itself so what is the 28th sutra it is like this iridam yatte tiruvaksharamai moon rupadamai irukkum so the ashtakshara maha mantra contains as the name itself says eight syllables and also three words iridan yet tiruvaksharamai it has eight syllables and also or we may call it as alphabets i don't know which is the right word or both may be correct and moon rupadamai irukkum it contains three words so this is commented upon by vanana mamuni in this manner அதாவது இம்மந்திரந்தான் ஓமித்யே காட்சரம் நமைதி துவே அக்ஷரே நாராயணாயேதி பஞ்சாட்சராணி இத்தியஷ்டாட்சரம் சந்தசா காயத்ரி சேதி ஓமித்யகிரே வியாகரே நமைதி பச்சாத் நாராயணாயேத்யுபரிஷ்டாத் என்கிறபடியே எட்டு திருவக்ஷரமாய் மூன்று பதமாய் இருக்கும் என்கை சோ தெரி beautiful treatise called not treatise a vedic treatise rather called the narayana upanishad or the narayana atharvashila upanishad which is which explains the supremacy of lord narayana along with explaining the supremacy of the lord of lord narayana it also explains the extent extent and also the components of the ashtakshara mahatma so it starts and i am sure persons like keshavdas would be familiar with this atha purusho havai narayano kamaya tat praja sride eti narayana prano jayate manas sarvendriyani cha kham vayur jyotira prathivi vishyasya dharini narayana brahma jayate narayana rudro jayate narayana indro jayate நாராயணாத்ரஜாபத்தையாயந்தேத்ரஜாயந்தேத்ரஜாயந்தேத்ரஜாயந்தேத்ரஜாயந்தேத்ரஜாயந்தேத்ரஜாயந்தேத்ர
నారాయణాయేతి పంచాక్షరాణి ది వర్డ్ నారాయణ కంటైన్స్ ఫైవ్ సిలబస్ సో ఫైవ్ ప్లస్ త్రీ ప్లస్ టూ ఈజ్ ఎయిట్ నారాయణ ఏతి పంచాక్షరాణి ఏతద్వై నారాయణస్య అష్టాక్షరం పదం యో హై నారాయణస్య అష్టాక్షరం పదమధ్యేకి అనపబ్రవస్ సర్వమాయురేకి ఎక్సెట్రా ఎక్సెట్రా ఇట్ దెన్ ఇట్ డిలీనియట్స్ ది రిజల్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ ది పర్సన్ హూ హ్యాస్ అటైన్ సిద్ధి ఆర్ అకాంప్లిష్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ది అష్టాక్షర మా సో దీస్ ఆర్ ది ఎయిట్ syllables that form the ashtakshara maha mantra and also three words om namaha and narayana yeah. so that has been mentioned in the narayana atharva shiro upanishad which is a very 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 important authentic text that all shri vaishnavas have to recite every day <coughs> so idi nudaya idi idi nudaya ashtaksharatvam shundu hiravidattile ఓమిత్యేకాక్షరం ఎందు ప్రణవత్తై ఓ రక్షరమాహవుం నమ ఇతి ద్వే అక్షరే ఎందు నమస్సై ఇరండక్షరమాహవుం నారాయణాయేతి పంచాక్షరాణి ఎందు నారాయణ పదత్తై అంచక్షరమాహవుం శృతి శుద్ధుహయాదే ది వేదాస్ ప్రొక్లైన్ దట్ ది అష్టాక్షర మహామంత్ర కమ్ కంటైన్స్ ఓం ది ఫస్ట్ వర్డ్ ఓం హ్యావింగ్ ఓన్ సిలబల్ the second word namaha containing two syllables and the third word narayana containing five syllables overall making it eight syllables due to which it is called as ashta akshara maha mantra ashta means eight akshara means syllables so ashta akshara maha mantra means the maha mantra the greatest mantra that contains eight syllables om na maha narayanaya in this manner ఎందు నారాయణ పదత్తై అంజక్షరమాహం షొడ్డు హయాలే సమస్త పదమాన నారాయణ పదత్తి మార పదత్తై పిరిత్తి షడక్షరమాక్కి ప్రణవత్తయొడియ అష్టాక్షరత్వం షొండుమవర్ అడుడియ పక్షం అవైదికమాహయాలే అనాదరణీయమాహక్కడ వది హియర్ one very important aspect is explained by swami manohar mahamni which is very much to be noted <coughs> some people what they do is they actually interpret this mantra or say that this mantra has only six syllables so what they do is they it has been well mentioned here <coughs> సమస్త పదమాన నారాయణ పదత్తి నార పదత్తై పిరిత్తి షడక్షరమాక్కి ప్రణవత్తయొడియ అష్టాక్షరత్వం షుల్లు చుల్లు అవర్హల్ సమ్ పీపల్ దే యాక్చువలీ స్ప్లిట్ ది వర్డ్ నారాయణ అండ్ దే సే నారా ఇస్ సపరేట్ అయనా ఇస్ సపరేట్ అండ్ దే ఆల్సో లీవ్ అవుట్ ది ప్రణవ అండ్ సే that is how the ashtakshara mahamantra is formed which is totally kare in kare because that school of thought is avaidika mahayade that school of thought is not vaidika it is not according to the vedic tradition and therefore anadaraniya mahakkalavadi that such a school of thought should not be respected because it is not in accordance with the school of the vedic thoughts then he comes to the 29th sutra which says moon rupadamam moon dartatte chollu hirade the three words constituting the mantra that is om namaha and narayanaya actually delineate three important concepts or issues ఇరిల్ ముదల్ పదం ఎవ్వర్తెన్నుమాకాంక్షైలేదేన్ 
thirtieth sutra comes into play. Adavade Sheshatamum Paratantriamum Kainkariamum Yandri. The three concepts explained by the three words respectively are Sheshatva, subservience, Paratantriya, total dependence, and third aspect is Kainkariya or the servitude. Swarupamum, Swarupa, the Rupaman, a propium in the Mudachunavakyartham, Idaidan, Ide. So, what is this Swarupa, the nature of the individual soul? It is Sheshatva, that is, he is totally subservient. Then, since he is totally subservient, he is totally dependent on the Supreme God. Since he is totally dependent, what should he do? He should engage in the servitude of the Supreme God. So this is what was mentioned earlier also. So, which is the first word among these three? That is given, given by the 31st Sutra, which says, Ippadatrayatthilum prathamapadantam yedenna. Among the three words, which is the first word? Idil mudal padam pranavam. The first word is the pranava or omkara. Omitya grave yahare. So the first word that has to be chanted is Om. This has been mentioned in the Narayana Atharvashira Upanishad also, which we just saw or heard. And there are also Smriti, Smriti text which says Pranavadhyam namo madhyam Narayana padantimam mantra mashtaksharam vidyate. Sarvasiddhi karam pranam inna dire. So it very beautifully, the Smriti works also very beautifully say, Pranava Adhyam. Adhya means that which is situated in the beginning. So that which is in the beginning is the Pranava, that is Omkara. Namo Madhyam. The word in the middle is the word Namaha. And the Last word of the final word is Narayanaya. So Pranava Adhyam Namo Madhyam Narayana Pada Antibam. This is how the Ashtaksara Mahamantra is made up of three words. Mantra Ashtaksharam Vidyate. This is how one should understand the Ashtaksara Mahamantra. And what does it do? Sarva Siddhi Karam Dhanam. It is, it begets all the good things, all the good accomplishments for human beings. That is what the Sparthi text said. And further, Hini pranavatirka artha maruditya ivadaha idinudi aksharatraya atmakataya aruditya ira. So, what is the meaning of home? We talk about, we call, we call the syllable Dhom as the greatest syllable on earth. The Upanishads proclaim and say so much about the world Dhom. In fact, it is translated as a synonym of the name of the Lord of Lord Narayan. That is another very important issue that one needs to understand. So, it is A innum, U innum, Ma innum, Mundu Thiruvaksharam, Skandisa, consists of three. Syllables, namely A, U, and Ma. In the Aksharatrain Udea, Leum Utpati Kramatta is Adrishtan Tamaha Rudichi Hira. Before that, he says, Idi A in Numu in Numa in Numu to the river Charami, Kanavandan, Asam Hitaka Tare, Moon Raksharamai, Moon Rupadamai, Moon Rakta Prakashakamai. Samhita karatta de ekaksharamai, ekaparamai, ekartha prakashakamai de rupadi. Very beautifully, Swami Manavada Mamuni gives an exposition of what is the meaning of this rebel Om. So he says there are two words, two methods of interpreting the meaning of the word or pranava or omkara. He says samhita kara and asamhita kara. Though it is a single syllable called Om, it is a combination of three important or three basic 
vowels namely a u and also ma which is actually a consonant two vowels and one consonant the greatness of pranava has been explained in thousands of pages in the upanishads and their commentaries because from the point of view of yoga shastra it is a very 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 important <coughs> aspect because it says tasya vajakah pranavah in the <coughs> yoga sutras the word om is said to be the name of the supreme lord or ishwara so the the current explanation does not contradict that this explanation is given in a different perspective that explanation is given in a different perspective so there is no contradiction be between these two. so here what happens see pranavandan asamhita karattare moon raksharamai when you split the sandhi what happens you have three alphabets namely a u and m or makara and both all the three syllables depict or convey three different meanings if you consider these three as independent components of the pranava samhita karattale ekaksharamai but since they have done they have joined together and become a single syllable then it is considered as one single alphabet of the om and at that in this context the second interpretation where the pranava is considered to be as a single syllable then it can become as a single meaning so if you consider it when you split the sandhi and consider it as three different alphabets or syllables it has three meanings that is also that interpretation also is very much pertinent and relevant if you consider om as a single syllable and a single word and therefore it has a single meaning that is also acceptable both these interpretations are very much acceptable what it means how that meaning is derived etc we will see in the next class so now if you have any questions or any feedback you are welcome to give it uh swami thank you very much um <clears throat> regarding uh regarding the mantra the astakshara mantra yes there are some there are some vaishnava traditions where they they say that uh, there are certain people who should not chant pranava there are certain people who should not chant omkara even there are certain people who should no should not chant even the chaturthi vibhakti aya and they get and uh, examples are given from puranas and different shastras in other rahasya granthas of uh, for instance deshika sampradaya where people have chant uh, namo narayana or just the word narayana uh, or uh, and uh, there is a, uh, some explanation that some people should chant om instead of om can you can you comment on that i think we have uh, briefly discussed about this in one of the earlier classes also so there is one school of thought which says that the pranava should not be chanted by ladies and also the persons belonging to the shudra community kindly don't uh, mistake me when i am uh, calling a community by a name so please do not mistake me this is what i am mentioning what is mentioned in the shastras because today the word shudra has a very bad connotation though it is not so actually <clears throat> because the indian tradition very specifically says that women and shudras in the shudras are the fourth class of i don't call it a caste i call it a class because classification is mandatory in any society you cannot have a class you can have a you can try to have a casteless society but you cannot have a classless society <clears throat> so class may be based on age it may be based on intellectual capability or physical capability etc so <clears throat> the 
Shastra specifically prohibit those belonging to Shudra, persons belonging to Shudra community and also persons who are, whose gender is women, female, who are females, not to practice the Vedas. It says, Nastri Shudra Veda Madhiya. And nowadays, the modern thinkers, especially those who are influenced by the British, they actually misinterpret this rule, saying that they have discriminated. So the Indian seers have discriminated against women. They have discriminated against the Shudras. So I have been specifically making this sort of usage. They have not discriminated, they have distinguished. Discrimination is different, distinction is different. So why the ladies and also the persons belonging to Shudra community should not change the Vedas, why they should not learn the Vedas in the formal manner. So my Acharya and revered father, he gives a very modern but traditional Traditional explanation put it in modern put in modern language. The system will not accept it. It is as simple as that. So he gives an example where you have a 486 computer, which which was there long, long ago. <laughs> of course, in the 90s, earlier 2000, we had 286, 386, then 486, then you had Pentium or whatever it is. Of course, now the now, names themselves have changed. We have Core 2 Duo, Core i2, Core i7, or something like that. The name of the chip, or whatever it is. So, if you put a 64 bit Windows software, you install it on the 486 computer, immediately it will crash. Because the hardware is not capable of supporting the software of that extent. So this is universally accepted by one and all because it is our experience. <laughs> Unless the hardware is capable of supporting the software, the hardware will, the system will crash. So the human system has different categories, among which the system of women or the system of the Shudras are actually they are coming to being in a different manner. They are created in a different manner than the others. Is it purely based on birth or is it based on quality? That's a different question which has to be explained in another context. So we have the famous story of Parashurama and Karna in the Mahabharata. So Karna actually disguised himself as a Brahmin and came to learn the Dhanurvidya or the art and science of the, uh, what is that, uh, archery from Parashurama who had made a vow that he'll teach only Brahmins and not Kshatriyas because he hated Kshatriyas. That's a different, why he hated, is it correct or not, that's a different question which is not pertinent now. So when Parashurama, the master or the preceptor was resting on the lap of his disciple Karna, it is said in the, it comes in the story that Indra himself came as a bee and he bit Karna so much so that blood started oozing out of his uh, thigh. And soon there was blood all over and Parashurama, the Receptor, he awoke and he said, why did you not wake me up? When a bee has bit you so intensely and uh, there is so much of blood dozing out of the wound, why did you wake up? Then Karna said, no master, I didn't, you were sleeping, you were fast asleep, I didn't want to disturb you. Then he said, how could you withstand so much of pain when blood is oozing out of your of the wound that is caused by the biting of the bee. Then Karna said, I somehow it's true. Then Parashurama asked, no, you are telling a lie. 
the brahmin can never withstand such pain you are a kshatriya please don't lie to me that's what he said then immediately karna was taken aback and he said yes i am a kshatriya actually i am not a kshatriya i am not a brahmin what i am i don't know i am i have been brought up by a charioteer so i don't know who who i am i don't know my origins i know i am the fastest son of a charioteer so it is even today in india i don't know whether it is pertinent to mention all these things a certain class of people are there who cannot actually uh, sustain or they cannot withstand rather they cannot withstand the pain of heart surgery so they actually if heart surgery surgery on the heart is conducted they actually die instantly that i have heard from very close qualified doctors who mention that in a <laughs> they don't mention it openly they mention it in secret in secrecy so each system has its own capability to withstand certain things to not be able to withstand certain things so in the modern context that is how my father interprets it he says the system will not accept it will not withstand it. so very simply this is the answer so each system has its own capabilities and capacities so the other school of thought which says don't use the pranava om namo narayana it is men, it is mentioned with that intent in mind so whether this is correct or that is correct we cannot say this is totally wrong that is totally wrong it depends on the view point so as of now i would like to end by saying these two schools of thought exist each has its own merits <clears throat> right so um okay so we understand that there are different traditions and uh, yes. people have faith in their tradition and they should follow their tradition and their acharyas yes, yes, yes. that that uh, it's fine completely fine so uh, i had some other other question you also mentioned uh, narayana upanishad and in narayana upanishad uh, it says uh, vaikuntha bhuvana lokam gamishyati it yes. says that the person who uh who worships i won't say a person of chance but i say the person who worships uh narayana iti mantra upasaka he's an upasaka of uh, not just chanting but he should know the the meaning and he should employ it correctly he will go to vaikuntha bhuvana lokam so and but at the end of the upanishad it says narayana sayujam avapnoti narayana sayujam avapnoti shuman narayana sayujam yes. so are we to understand that uh, sayujam means going to vaikuntha lokam or sayujam is a separate thing of course <laughs> vaikuntha bhuvana lokam gamishyati and then sayujam because as you know i am i'm sure you would be knowing there are four stages of moksha that is salokya sarupya samipya and sayujam so salokya is staying attaining the same world or same uh, loka or whatever you would like to call it then samipya attaining the proximity of the lord then sarupya attaining the same form it is said that he even grants his shankha chakra etc to the uh, muktatma because it is mentioned as niranjana paramam samya upai he becomes almost like the lord and then sayujya so it is mentioned as sayujo that is sayujya is what samana guna yoga he he also comes to have all the auspicious qualities of the supreme lord except for a few that is that is what is mentioned in the final adhikarana of the brahma sutras where it says jagat vyapar avartya etc he becomes equal in all respects to the lord except for a few aspects like he will not be able to engage in the process of creation sustenance and dissolution he will not attain lakshmi but she of patitva he cannot become the consort of the lord lakshmi etc so except for these few he becomes totally totally equal to the lord in all respects so that is narayana sahitya mavap noti narayana sahitya mavap noti it is mentioned twice to say that it really happens but for that as i mentioned 
by means of the mantra he has to attain the vision of the sakshatkara of the supreme lord and then only it happens and we have to attain attempt for that only and nothing else right so we have to understand that so sayuja does not mean uh, a complete merging of the jivatman and the paramatman that is what uh, see what happens is some people uh, i uh, mention it as complete merging even in the pancharatra samhitas we have uh, certain passages that say that he became he completely merges into the supreme lord etc but merging whether you say he is totally equal to the supreme lord or whether he is one with the lord that is why it said virandanah paramam sam so it's like almost he is another lord himself <laughs> so in that way because my guru used to mention it see whatever word whether you don't uh, uh, engage in some debate based on these words because these are meant to give you only an inclination because there is no word that is available uh, available to us that can describe that state that state of existence so you you say that he becomes totally one with the lord you uh, whether it, it is totally merging or whatever it is ultimately some small difference still exists <laughs> that is why i have heard i don't know whether it is true in chaitanya sampradaya in some sampradaya it says ishad bheda garbha bheda it is total uh, uh, monism with some small amount of difference or distinction but whether it is total merging or not how much ever we quarrel or we have differences of opinion or we debate we, we will not be able to resolve the debate or issue because we don't know if there is no word that very specifically depicts that state that we can understand as well but that much is true he becomes totally totally identical with the lord so whether it is identity or whether he is identical <laughs> that that small thing exists right which so, uh, our, our, under, uh, our understanding is that the, that uh, there there is eternal kind karya there is service going on yes so uh, when you say service there has to be a servant and one servant and also the veda the veda says pasyanti surayaha i cannot see somebody if i am that person there has to be yeah, a separate yes sada pasyanti surayaha is there but in another place it is mentioned ah yatra atmayo sarvam abhutyanakam pasyetyanakam vidanya so there is a, there are different accounts but we cannot say we say this is correct only yes we we actually accept that view but even the, the other view also we have to accept so it depends that is why my guru used to say there is also a very specific indication by ramanand acharya stating that even in vaikuntha a person a, a soul can opt to decide without possessing a body that is very important point which generally other scholars don't say so when he doesn't possess a body even in vaikuntha what is his nature it is his nature is very much similar to the nature of the lord himself so whether he engages in kain karya without a body or with body that are, that those issues we cannot discuss or resolve now but as far as we are concerned we say he is engaged in servitude only because that is the nature of the jiva so so marching is not actually mentioned very specifically as uh, shivaishnavas we don't we don't want to merge we want to serve him <laughs> uh, and even if there is a stage uh, accepting assuming that there is a, such a stage hypothetically we don't want that and we then, want to engage in service only. right and so then there are these uh, these four 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 types of four types of moksha each beginning yeah, they, with they are, they are conducive for a person to engage in service right but there's also so also like this, the lord but still serves the lord yeah there's also this idea of kaivalya and how is kaivalya different from kaivalya is once again it has been interpreted as he will never uh, the person who has attained kaivalya he will never come to the portals of parampara or vaikuntha he will stay outside he may enjoy some bliss but it is not comparable to the bliss that a jivatma or individual soul enjoys when he is in vaikuntha 
So that is to, once again a very very subtle and uh, very what to say technical. a topic that is much debated upon, but not much uh, clarity is available. So if if Kaivali the, if Kaivali is, a, the, is outside of where is the four Acharyas? Yes, Kaivali is outside of uh, Vaikuntha. Yes, that is how it has been described. But uh, but uh, my understanding was that in Tanacharya Sampradayam, it, Kaivalya can also be a permanent situation. Yes, it is mentioned as permanent where he yeah, where he engages in enjoying the bliss of the Jivatma alone, and he will not come to attain or uh, engage, experience the bliss of the Paramatma. So it is uh, that is why it is called as Kevarasya Bhavaha Kaivalya. So he he is interested in, in, in his own the bliss of bliss associated with the individual self rather than the supreme self. That is why it is known as Kaivalya according to our Sampada. But if it is if it is not in Vaikuntha, then how can it be permanent? Because we that understand is, that, is, that is why I said that is why I said there is lot of debate in this regard without much clarity. <laughs> so it's not it is not too much worthwhile debating about it. They say he will be a outside Vaikuntha, but whether it is physically you have uh, rooms and <laughs> places like this or not is a it's a very complicated question which cannot be very clearly answered by anybody because it is based on some of the uh, textual references that are available. But uh, it's uh, we cannot we are not able to resolve this in a very proper manner because. It is totally otherworldly, and we have no experience whatsoever about this. So, also, you were mentioning in the beginning of the class about the Sadvida Sharanagati. There are six yes. aspects to Sharanagati. Yes, yes. But I think it seems like Sri Vaishnavas count five aspects, and the sixth aspect is is actually Sharanagati or property. Uh, and please, Ari, please, can, please, uh, please repeat it. Five, uh, five as. Can can you explain? Can you explain? Uh, you said these are stages. Uh, are they stages? Are they qualifications? Are they prerequisites? Are they postrequisites? Are they qualities? No, it is a, it is a stages only because one follows the other. So first anupulya si sankalpaha that is the first one. Then pratikulya si varjana. I'll explain it in detail in another class. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, so I have one further question. Very little technical question. That uh, uh, we see that we, we, everything that we do, there's a, the idea of sattvika tyaga is there. You said we don't want the fruits of any anything that we do. Yeah. So we, we do the sattvika tyaga. So the tenacharya sampradaya and the and the deshika sampradaya have different ways of doing the sattvika tyaga. The, the deshika sampradaya they do very formally. Very for, they are doing it very formally. No, oh, Tenacharya Sampradaya cannot give up Sattvika Tyaga because Ramanjacharya himself has mentioned it in the beginning itself of the Nitya Granta. Nitya Granta, right, I was going to say. It's in, it's in Nitya Granta. So there's no problem if, uh, if in Tenacharya Sampradaya we can also say Bhagavan Eva Swaniyamya Surupa Stiti Yes, yes, by all means, means it has to be said. I see. Sir, so, so it has not been given importance because if a person has already overcome his kartritva or his agency, since he, if he has already overcome his agency, there is no need to say. Because he, only if he thinks that I am doing, then you have to say I have given all the fruits or it has been done by God by himself, not me. And so openly or outwardly, it need not be said. Because already it is inherently he has actually got that view. Therefore, I, uh, that is what that is the answer that is coming to my mind at this moment. I have to verify it with other uh, scholars, uh, probably my father or other uh, and other scholars. So, if you have already realized that, there might not be a need to uh, explicitly mention that. Therefore, they might have uh, they might have not even it, uh, mentioned it in their Trivaradna Kramas, etc. But definitely, since Ramanjacharya himself has mentioned it in the beginning of the Nitya Granta, definitely we also accept it and respect it. So I think I'll conclude with the. We can question. conclude. Thank you so much, ma'am. Achedra Ramanujetyesha Tatura Tatura Kshari 
ಕಾಮವಸ್ಥಾಂಪ್ರಪದ್ಯಂತೆಜಂತವೋಹಂತಮಾದೃಶ್ಯಾಯ ಶ್ರೀಮಾನಾವಿರಭೂತ್ಭ